three, two, and one. We are live, finally. <laughs> An hour and 11 minutes later and whatnot. Sorry about that. So uh, thank you all for uh, coming. And uh, I might sound a little bit somber just because I've just really been disappointed with uh, the uh, technology, but I think that's largely due to my lack of understanding as to how the technology works. Uh, so, I mean, what can I say, right? So, anyway, uh, how you gentlemen doing? We got uh, we got Jab and Jay on the line here with us. So, what's up? What's up? Well, how are you all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing what you gotta do. It's like that moment when you didn't you didn't realize you were wearing a blue shirt, and then all of a sudden, when you're like seeing yourself through the stream, you realize you're wearing a blue shirt. Like that's that's literally what I'm dealing with right now. At least you're not a red shirt. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Good one, Jab. Yeah, got him. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Are you saying I'm a red shirt freshman from a certain school? No, I was, uh, that's a Star Trek reference, even though I've never watched Star Trek. Yeah, it is. Oh. It is. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the format for tonight. This is how to type. Uh, so basically, uh, what we do is is that we have a bidding system, and the bidding system is uh, you give us a super chat, and then we type uh, whoever you want us to type according to your super chat. Just a couple rules of super chat. If we have typed them before, we're going to say no and ask you to select somebody else. Uh, they have to have some kind of audio, and it has to be really good quality interview audio where it's not being used by a script or anything else for that matter. Uh, otherwise, we're going to make you change uh, who it is to somebody else. Uh, whoever has the highest bid of Super Chat gets priority. This means uh, you know these go around for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. At the end of the hour, if there's any Super Chats left, we may or may not get to everybody. Uh, so we realize that that is a risk. We usually call out for no more super chats uh, when we do that. Uh, so uh, just understand uh, that that's a thing. Um, so so be aware of that. Uh, and uh, we got a new uh, YouTube uh, chat widget uh, tonight. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah. Uh, Go ahead and uh, send us your super chats, and then we can get uh, started on new how to type in, in terms of like, okay, hey, you know, this is who we're typing. And again, highest super chat gets priority. Did I miss anything there, gentlemen? Um, for the mo most part, no. It's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like an auction where you don't get your money back if you lose. Just kidding. Right. We'll probably try and get through almost <laughs> any significant super chat. Yeah, but like exactly. If you donate two dollars, don't expect us to hang around for another hour to get through all the two dollars in chat. Yeah, exactly. But hey, you know, since uh, since nobody has uh, given us a super chat, I guess that means we have free reign to choose uh, whoever we want. So somebody actually messed up during the Who Triggered CSJ stream and donated fourteen dollars and ninety nine and said, "Whoops, sorry." Wrong stream. Can you push this forward to the next stream? So we've got a fourteen ninety nine super chat from someone asking for dual. Oh my gosh! I just saw I just saw two super chats come okay. in. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. But we'll but, add that name to the list, Dad. Yeah. Add that name. To yeah, the yeah list. I, I I did already have the video ready just in case nobody got a super chat in. But okay. Aiden Wojcicki bet that super chat with twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, and is that is that Vi oh. like the actual Vi? I mean, Stephen Curry. Interesting. Did we do Stephen Curry already? I mean, uh, I don't think we did Stephen Curry. I don't think we did. No, no, I don't think we did. No. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Jab, fire it up. Let's get let's get down on this. All right. So Sebastian Koichiba or Koichiba, or I don't know if that's Italian or Italian Koichiba, but here's an interview with him, Biohacker Chat. Check this out. No, I've not done Sam Harris before. Even though I'll say ENTP before anyone tries. Okay. Let me just figure out who he is in this video first. Share the link in Platinum uh, uh, Q&A from Aiden Washness. 
I can't post there, but oh, there we go. Yeah, that's the exact video I was on. Oh, there you go. Okay. You can add to someone's donation. Yes, you can. You just uh, you just say in your message with the super chat uh, X amount towards this person's, and this is the the one. So yes, we did have we did, we did have, have that happen a last time. War. We had a bidding war, and some people ganged up on Aiden. <laughs> uh, there's one thing I've learned in life: never bet against Aiden. Yeah, never bet against Aiden. <laughs> My goodness. Actually, do bet against Satan. It means we win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Everyone mean, wins. Dab, how's your coin slot tonight? <laughs> Pretty good. Chris right. Angel, Mind Freak. Oh, that's a good one. That is Jordan a good one. Jordan Spike. Yes, that's going to be a really My, good one. My goodness. Mind Freak. Yeah. <gasps> What's Mind Freak? Is that like a TV show or something? Yeah. I, I don't know what Mind Freak is. You have to excuse my ignorance. Isn't that magic? Yeah. Oh, someone add to uh, Tulsi Gabbard too. Yeah, uh, he's an illusionist. Okay, so so Jab mm -hmm. like or somebody uh, keep track of the super chats, keep a tally going, please, because we're gonna have to at this point. Why don't I try oh, to do that? Yeah, please do, Jay. Thank you. All right. All right. Yes. All right. So let's start with uh, Sebastian Kuchiba. So here he is. Oh, in the so he's showing off his laboratory. Left to right. So there's my gene gun. And who's here? It's my gene gun. Oh. One thousand gene gun. Looks like an espresso machine. So the guy who's talking about his laboratory is the guy with. Is it? Is it too soft? I can turn it up. Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Oh. I know it totally does. That's what I was gonna say. Is that an yeah. espresso machine? <laughs> yeah, like legit. Like it, it's got uh, some funky Chinese markings, and it works really well. And you can. The best part is you can actually Movement. remove the reaction chamber, so it's not like the old one that you can. I think it's TE because he's like showing off his laboratory. Look how cool I am! I have a laboratory. This is a. Mm, that's more of an SE thing, showing it off. Actually, uh, showing off anything yeah, is that's more true. of an SE thing. Right, but I kind of feel like he's using it to gain credibility. Look at me! I have a laboratory. I have status. Okay. I, I... All right. I'll put a point down for TE. Fair enough. This guy, he's he might be an INTJ. So, I mean, of course, he might be an INTJ. Of course, Aiden, you know, with his uh, with his NT uh, requests for super chats, Mr. Aiden, love you for it, bro. <laughs> Keep going, Jeb. Yes, we do. We do. I mean, the only the only person I know who's referred to another language as funky symbols or hieroglyphics is an, is a ENTJ. Both me and you know, oh. and that's basically what he did, referring to this gene gum. Does he speak so let's Russian? See, let's see what okay. happens. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go about... there. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about uh, Chinese symbols on a laboratory piece of equipment because I'm assuming it was made in China. Oh, okay. There's still anyway. hieroglyphics. Hey, let's do it. And, uh, it's like a crappy prototype door. This one's pretty legit. Uh, anywho, so here are all the chemicals necessary to keep a plant alive and then some other stuff just to uh, do testing. And then over there, I really get, need to get a wireless camera or something. Over there are all of my plants. Those are morning glories that are spilling over. All of my um, plans. Working on a hush hush project for, with MIT on that. And then what else? What else? What else? What do we got? Uh, on this side, we got a microscope, regular lab bench, random glassware, more bro things. And then over here is my latest baby, this is the laminar flow hood that has saved me so much heartache and time. It's nice and spacious. I used to work in a shoebox, and so now it's a little bit more legit. It's nice and spacious. Yeah. Mm. So that's kind of my digs. Um, what? Do I okay. First of all, uh, somebody who's actually worked in a laboratory. This guy's triggering. First of all, he's in a laboratory. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. First of all, his entire laboratory is an absolute mess. Second of all, he's not wearing any safety PP. Uh, PPSE or yeah, PPE, yeah. however PPI. you want to refer to it. Personal, uh, personal protective equipment. equipment. Personal mm -hmm. protective safety equipment, I've also heard it referred to as. He's not wearing any safety goggles. He's not wearing a lab coat. His sleeves are short sleeves. Usually you have to at least wear long sleeves, even when you're not you know, in contact with hazardous chemicals. And this guy is doing none of that. He's just casually streaming in his laboratory. 
Yep. Ugh. And the amount of bottles he has around his lamina flow hood. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. What do I do? I do stuff with plants. So kind of seems initial, though. That, that's a nice Chinese like thing. Did you get on Alibaba or where would you get it? Uh, yeah, uh, it's called Ningbo, um, Ningbo Science with a Z. It's very strange. Uh, yeah, but I got it on. Yeah, I got it on Alibaba, and um, I negotiated it down from like seven grand to four and a four and a bit, because I told them that nobody on the Eastern Seaboard has one. I'm almost certain of it. Uh, That's kind of just like lowered it the, to that point. Um, yeah, it's like the only thing that it paid almost full price for, but it is worth That's its weight in gold. Paid full literally. price for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. That's sweet. Yeah, it's 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 really it's it's nice because you don't have to um, you have to worry about the door. So the PDS one thousand, the original gene gun, yeah. that sells for like twenty five grand. Um, the door kind of sucks, and the whole thing is just one big the prototype. Kind of sucks. The rest... That's an SE statement. Yep, yep. Um, also worth like twenty five grand. That's another TE statement. Applying Agreed. values. And, and he's systematic. Values. He's explaining his system as he goes through it. Mm hmm. Fittings aren't really rated for that pressure. So it's like it's going to blow up at any moment. It's kind of terrifying. TJ Quadra <laughs> automatically. Uh, so, um, so he's SFP. It's, it's and not, say again. It's not really rated for that pressure, which means he's following a manual. Okay. So that's, that's systematic a and TE. And it's, it's systematic and TE. So we know he's systematic. Okay. We know his SFP and TJ Quadra. So he has to be, and we know he's direct, so he's either ENTJ, INTJ by default, but he seems very, very movement. Uh, I'm not seeing any control there. So as a result, this guy is an INTJ. Oh, pap. Next. Wow. Yeah. All uh, right. Who's the next? next, Aiden's got another one, Lex Friedman. All right, Lex Friedman. 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 Oh. I have no idea. I have no idea. Ah, uh, yeah, neither did I. I go. Let's, let's get him on Joe Rogan. Good old Joe Rogan, like the origin of our how to type streams. I'm pretty sure our first two how to type were with Joe Rogan. Well, no, it wasn't. The first one was Trump. Whatever. Close enough. Sci fi, the well, movie It's absolutely spot. one of my favorite sci fi right. movies. One of my favorite movies, period. I loved it. Yeah. So I, I, I watched it again. And also, Sam Harris said that he also hated the movie and then watched it again and liked it so i gave it a, <laughs> so i get i gave it a chance why would you see a movie again after you hate it uh because maybe you're self-aware enough to think there's something unhealthy about the way i hated the movie hmm. like you're like introspective enough to know it's Ooh. like I, I have the same experience with batman Okay, I watched uh, which one? That's S I N E. Dark Knight, I think. Mm. Is Christian Bale? Christian Bale one. So, to me, the first time I watched that is is a guy in a costume, like speaking. Let's explain why that's S I N E though. If it was S E, he would have understood it in the moment and realized why he didn't like it. But his S I felt the need to revisit it again in the future so they could gain a better understanding. Agreed excessively with an excessively low voice i mean it's just something sit with like little yeah. bunny ear not bunny ears but like yeah. little ears it's so silly but then you go back and okay if we just accept that those that's the reality of the world we live in if we go back si and we accept that's the reality of the world we live in any so si any right there yeah that's also an abstract uh, what's the yeah. true the human nature aspects that are being explored here. What is the the beautiful conflict between good and evil that's being explored here? Tim. And what are the awesome and evil uh, abstract, graphics still. effects that are being on the exhibit? Right. The <laughs> so awesome graphics just effects. Si. Suspend statement. that. That's beautiful. Uh, it, the movie can become quite fun to watch, but still, and to me. Oh. So okay. over time, it can develop into a good experience as yeah. I further That's analyze it. Yep. That's yeah. Any. Yep. Offend anybody, but uh, that superhero movies are diff still difficult for me to watch. Yeah, who's talking about Seems that recently? Was it Kelly? Kelly Slater? No. No, it was yesterday. Yesterday. It's Kyle. He's it's Kyle. Kyle. Like, uh, yeah, he doesn't. No, it movies. it was yesterday. Yeah. Corrected him. He doesn't like superhero statement. movies. We're talking about Batman, about Christian Bale's voice. And he's like, the most ridiculous thing was that he's actually Batman, not that his voice. 
<laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. true. The, I'm Batman. That part of it is way less ridiculous than the fact that he's Batman. He's Batman. Because anybody could do that voice. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I uh, contradict. I'm um, I'm a hypocrite because uh, Game of Thrones oh, yeah, or you know, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. I'm a hypocrite. I'm a that to- was initiated. It's totally believable to me. Mm-hmm. I think this guy might be an ENTP. Yeah, I'm really thinking this guy might be an ENTP as well. Kind of looks just, like he you. just he just straight up interrupted Joe Rogan there too. It's very pragmatic. He's talking about the system of uh, the colors of the film. But let's keep going. We need some more evidence on this. He's like so blazed though. It's so hard to like get the movement out of him because he's slowed down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of looks like maybe like your, your little your adopted little brother or something. Oh, thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Jim. Uh, I sent you a picture, by the way. <laughs> oh. yeah, of course, <laughs> dragons and. Well, that's yeah. a fantasy world, right? That's the problem with something like Batman or even Ex Machina is that right. it takes place in this world, it's whereas they're in Middle Earth. They're in a place that doesn't exist. Right. And if you, it's like if you like Avatar. If you make a movie about a place that does not exist, you can have all kinds of crazy shit in that movie. Scott Darcy, it's this not guy real. is high on marijuana. That's right. That's why. Yeah. So. so but at the same time, like Star Wars is harder for me. And you're saying Star Wars is, is a little more real because it's it feels feasible. Any, like you could have spaceships flying around. Right. Yeah, I mean, like just looking at how this guy's interacting, he's looking like an introverted extrovert, even though that sounds like an oxymoron. Yeah. He sounds like he looks like an introvert who's extroverting, which is how ENTPs can typically come across, exactly. which makes people perceive them as introverts. And he's informative, he's like, and he keeps initiating new ideas. He's not responding mm-hmm. at all. So absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you go on a visual typing basis, full black black suit, black tie. He's got a white shirt underneath it, but okay. And then he's got like the same kind of haircuts you like to get. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy shit! What, what's not okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Keep going. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Feasible about Star Wars too. Oh, I'm not. I'll leave that one to Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was getting angry about the robot. I'll leave circular. that one to Neil deGrasse <laughs> Tyson. Around. He's like, wow, that was T-I-F-E and pragmatic. That's hilarious. It was also informative. Yeah, and that was informative. And that was initiating. Okay, so yeah, he's an ENTP. Next. There you go. Next. Next. Right, next. We're going to go to we're going to go to Vi next with Katie Bo uh, Katie Bowman, oh, biochemist. Oh, I got past Aiden. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to take a break here. He had a penny on her, but we're going to go to Vi. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back to Aiden. <laughs> Katie I love the Effie <laughs> parent, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it. All right. Uh, so this is the black hole lady. Who who is this? The lady who was involved in the black hole picture. That came out wrong when I said black hole. Ooh, Kendrick Lamar. Dang, it's gonna be a good night. Keep oh, going. this is good. Um, she's got a TEDx talk, probably too scripted. Washington Post interview, I think. Unless. All right, what's the name of this person? Katie Bowman. You and at that. the time when I started the project, I didn't know anything about black holes, but I knew that this was a really exciting topic and something that I could contribute to. We have seen what we thought was unseeable. We have seen and taken a picture of a black hole. Turns out a black hole doesn't look entirely black. It is pretty incredible, though. The breakthrough picture puts us a step closer to proving Einstein's theory of relativity, which predicted the existence of black holes, and to understanding one of the most enigmatic aspects of the universe. Which predicted this, which predicted this, which predicted this. Oh, wait, no, that was just a... It was all about... I'm sorry, that was a Washington Post, like, over-freaking annotation. Oh, okay. So this Get overly energetic lady is her. Okay. You know, how can this we look at images, or how can we extract information from images? What if... Oh, my God. Robin is now a professor I at Caltech. So Back then, she led the development of an algorithm that helped... Okay, cal- so that's the annotation again. It possible six years now. I've been on this project for almost six years now and for the last year we've basically had to have our lips sealed about this exact you know imaging oh, process and even my family informed mm-hmm. initiating movement i'm a starter type lol i'm a starter 
A starter. Oh. <laughs> I think she might be like an ENFP or something. Maybe an ESFP. Hmm. Who knows? I could have sworn that was like a what if statement she made earlier, though. I'm going to put one down for a sec. Oh. It's, uh, just give me okay. some more audio on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Able to tell them yet. But it's so amazing to finally be able to tell the rest of the world. The next move in our research is a bit tell closer the rest to of the world. Home. We believe that there's a black hole we at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. And this black hole is called Sagittarius A star, or Sag A star for short. And we know that it's there because We've people have Sarah's actually TEFI. seen stars zipping around. People have actually seen stars zipping around. Hole. That's S-E-N-I. So if we're able to reconstruct an image from Sagittarius A star, that is a, a, uh, also statement. a a great test of general relativity and and stronger really than what we've seen so far because there's there's more degrees of freedom in the in the black hole that we've looked at but Ooh, um, that's degrees for the of future. freedom that's degree. a reference to the two six numbers it's te yes it is <laughs> it's also an se statement so she's in form of initiating control she's automatically sfp ntj uh, if we know that she's in form of initiating movement, excuse me, she's a starter, then we already know her quadrant, which is SFP and TJ. So the only one that is in there is ESFP. So we automatically know she's ESFP by default. We don't even have to look at her temperaments at this point. So there you go. Next. Back to Aiden. He's upped his bid too. So uh, oh. Chamath Palahaptia. Who is that? Uh, I don't know. And we'll I will find oh. out. <laughs> The last one he did was actually pretty interesting. So, Katie Bowman, folks, is the ESFP. There you go. All right. Chadith Palihapia. All right. Let's see. CEO, founder and CEO of Social Capital. Let's see. Former Facebook executive. I want to bring in our guest host this morning, Chamath Palihapia. She's the founder of Social Chamath. Capital, which manages more than $5 billion. I did ENTP. You can give us some hints about what that SPAC wants to buy. <laughs> Mouth is also the part owner of the Golden State uh, Warriors, and uh, we're thrilled to have him here. Straight Travels here. with an entourage. I know we have a whole team of people here this morning. Hi over there. It takes a uh, village. It takes a village. He's, he's got a power. wardrobe consultant. He's got uh, uh, obviously. Be good. Is, is that know, a, from the Sorkin collection? This is from the Sweater of the Month Club, as you oh, correctly there pointed out. Look, look at that. that is a TEFI <laughs> statement, if I've ever heard one. All right, let's skip to, ahead to when he's talking. All right, he's talking now. All of Joe's friends and everybody like him of my opinion in very subtle and small ways. And he can do the same to me. We can do that about vaccines. We can do that about gay rights. We can do that about bathroom laws. We can do that about Roy Moore. And so I think the question we have to ask ourselves is how do we live in a world where this is now possible? And so it was about that, but just so I understand it, was it because because I read uh, and watched parts of what you were talking about. Part of it seemed to me about the ability to pay to manipulate people's thoughts. The other seemed to me to be this sort of ADD society with which the sort of liking well, so and everything else has created this sort of feedback loop that you that you compared to drugs. We know for a fact that we what know. all of these systems do, every single one, is it exploits our own natural tendencies in human beings to get and want feedback. And that feedback, chemically speaking... Uh, it, right after his TE statement, he made an FI statement, like exploit. Like yep. a sense of and morality. Back. That's also an FI statement. Is the release of dopamine in your brain? He's direct. And so, what these feedback loops do, and they exist everywhere in Call of Duty. Isn't... Oh no, he's talking about a system. He's not necessarily following a system. So this right. could just be TE. In other video games, in social networking sites, they get you to react. And I think that if you get too desensitized yeah, you know, and you need it over and over and over again, then you become actually detached from the world in which you live. You become callous, you become crude. And you're you not live in front of your screen. But, but mm -hmm. Shamath, let me ask you this, because the, the thing that I've been so concerned about is Facebook just announcing that you're going to be having some app that you can use when you're 7 to 13. I mean, it's one thing for us to be doing this, but to be hooking your kids on something that you're describing as a dopamine fix at so, that age, that's crazy. So look, I think in the case of Facebook specifically, I think they have probably done more than any other company, quite honestly, to try to fix it that's because of all of the companies. And I've seen them all up Movement. close. They are the most, frankly, to be very blunt and honest, 
the best run and the most technically sophisticated. But they're also they're also emailing me if I haven't logged on to Facebook for a while saying, hey, did you see the post from so-and-so? Did you see the post from so-and-so? Trying to lure you back in. And again, Mm -hmm. we can make those decisions as adults, as as, as children. That is a different thing. Well, I think the product, and I don't know it quite honestly in as much detail as I should, but I think the way that that product works because of privacy laws in the United States, you actually have to get parental permission. The point, though, is, and what you're bringing up, I think, is the most important. We all have never taken a step back and actually asked ourselves, S-S-E-N-I. how should we be interacting with these things now, how seven years into these it? things now? And what should S-S-E. we be expecting? That's also well, abstract, internet. talking about the future. The internet, right, right, right. And, like, S- and the reason why it's SE is because he's obligating. Like, how yeah, should we? Exactly. It's very movement. The entire direct. business model. It's a direct right. responding and, and, so this and if guy... you consider the interaction... Right, sorry, let me just make this point and when you consider the interaction when you're trying to obligate someone you're acting on someone's si which by a process of elimination you're using se agreed. because si is a source of someone's duty and responsibility and what they should do agreed this guy's an intj all right. that's all there is to it direct response <laughs> pragmatic systematic abstract he's an sfp nfj quadra so yeah welcome to the intj uh, all right who's next uh, who's next Joseph House and Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick oh, Lamar Kendrick is Lamar. nice. Okay. Kendrick Lamar. Nice. Nice. Oh. nice. You always got to write interviewers that brings up all their music, all the music in the world. All right, Kendrick Lamar meets Rick Rubin. Skip ahead to the conversation. Oh. Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> you know, um, I shouldn't have held back. You know, but moving along, I know. You should have okay, held back. That's all you need. not going to be uh, mm-hmm. in the box saying what you want to say. And that's why I'm. Content wise, do you feel like you can talk yeah, about yeah. anything or do you feel an obligation to talk Ooh. about certain things? I can talk about anything. Okay. Any. I could talk about anything. And this is the challenge for me being able to talk about anything and I make can it tell connect. About anything is TI. You know, uh, to a listener, where a listener can either feel like you. Or feel like they understand you. That's or an FE statement. Uh, oh my gosh, this guy an ENTP. Talking about other people's feelings. He's Do they feel like they like you? Blah, blah 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 stuff like that. It's talking about other people's feelings. FE. Look, listen. Um, talking to a little kid and, and making that represent something, feel like something. Represent or saying the something. Most that's an FE statement. Harsh things on record where you know society may not want to hear it. No, but still having that connection. Well, that's also in any statement. Society may not want to hear the, what it's the other people abstract. Want. It is, absolutely. Um, that's what I think music is about for me. Period. That's what I think music is about for me. Period. TI yeah. statement. Mm-hmm. Do you um, think Seems about great movement. Ask... Let's talk about how you, you got to this place of of doing this. Like, What would have been inspirations along the way for you musically lyrically or or philosophically mm. that got you to this stage oh man that's a journey um i think first off it had to be how i was raised you know in, in the environment where raised, having the SI. SI. statement absolutely recalling the past of how he was raised that's high i think he's also the idea of my father system. being mm-hmm. uh, just a complete realist just in the streets and my mother having this idea of being a dreamer and me traveling in the world and doing all these things that I'm doing today. It starts there first, you know, before I even heard any type of melody or lyric. Um, that, that was implanted in me first. That's just a DNA. Statement, talk about you know, his past. who I am and the things I talk about today. It's always the yin and the yang, the good versus always the evil. Always the yin and the yang. I feel that first statement. Um, and eventually that. Again, that <laughs> eventually that uh that pushed me toward the music that I love to listen to, you know. And it came from Tupac. Pushed me to the music Biggie, I love to listen to. Is uh, Jay, I mean, talking about the experience. You know, the usual such that the these music. were the people that was played in my household. Mm-hmm. That not only I love to listen to, but it kind of complemented my DNA because these artists always had complemented my DNA. The systematic on life in general. And they put that in their lyrics and they put that in their music. And as a kid, I connected with it, you know, because I see my older Is cousins uh, going through the- They put that in their music. They put that in their lyrics. It's also an NE statement. 
So it's initi and he's initiating ideas. Okay, Kendrick Lamar, folks, is an ENTP. Next. And I'm back. Sorry. There you are. Yeah, sorry about that. Kendrick um, Lamar is an ENTP, so next. Oh, oh. oh as and oh. um, I was, I was explaining when you left the channel, I was saying he's talking about what other people did in their songs, uh, what their intentions were when they put those lyrics into their songs. That's another sign of any essay. Just screams right. any to me. Um, right, by, the way, by the way, Vi says that when we typed Katie Bowman, we typed the wrong Katie Bowman. We're looking oh, okay. for the one who owns Nutritious Movement. Oh, okay. What? All right. Um, All right, Katie Bowman 2.0. Somebody's going to need to find me a clip because when I look up Katie Bowman, all I see is this uh, black hole lady. Well, you want to go to the next one while we look up the clip? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Who's next? And that person can find us a YouTube clip. All right. This is from the Morgan Flies. He's looking for iDubs TV. iDubs TV. Uh, oh, iDubs. Mm -hmm. I think he wrote my favorite song. Would it be? Oh, no, not this guy. That's Filthy Frank. All right. So iDubs TV. Let's see what we can get out of this guy. Yes, Cheryl. ESFPs are amazing mathematicians and physicists. I don't know why people think that they're not, but they are. They're also very good at electronics engineering technology. It's because TI tricks that everyone thinks they're dumb. Yeah, it's it's wrong. They're they're actually bloody brilliant when they develop their uh, INTJ subconscious. All right. IDubs on the process of preparing content cop. Leading so up to the leafy podcast with H three H three video, I was like. Or whatever it's called. I don't know. I was... I wanted to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. And I, Ooh. you know, Ooh. it was very much like the Keemstar thing. It's like a lot of people didn't realize because everyone decided to jump on the bandwagon after the fact. Mm -hmm. But like leading... Yeah, I think this guy's 90J right yeah, off the back. Yeah, he's like 90J immediately. Like, I'm... Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Not to it. I was very nervous because... Yeah. Obviously, nervous. like, it, it was a big deal. He he had many more subscribers than me. TFI. Many people told me, yeah. like, this is a bad idea. Direct. Shit <laughs> tons of people said, I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> it must have been scary. And no TFI one had really taken, like, SDMI. major shots at him mm -hmm. since then. Yeah. It, it's... The the whole thing was really bizarre. I was I was afraid, like... It was bizarre. At that yeah. point, like, King's uh, avid supporters would, you know, mm -hmm. you know, dox me or do whatever, mm -hmm. this or that, send in the SWAT team. Right. But... So, uh, so that was the thing. It's like the day before I released the uh, Keemstar video, I called my local police and I was like, mm -hmm. put me on the white list. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, I said, give That's me a, a call if anything happens. I did the same thing before the leafy one as well. Wow. Um, it is that fucked up. Yeah, though. It, it is, is seriously. Like, some people. That sounds like an any nemesis. Like these people are going to fuck yeah. me over if I do yeah. this. Yeah, it is. For sure. <laughs> it's like, oh, I gotta call the police department so I don't get swatted when I release these two videos because their fans are gonna like yeah, do all this bad he's shit. He's following to me. his system of calling the cops because he's systematic. And what if the and what if the what if this happens to me? This is abstract, right? Yeah, that's abstract as well. Yeah, exactly. People are really just out of their fucking minds. Yeah. Those of you listening who <laughs> don't, people are just <laughs> yeah, it's like te parent, like pessimistic, and, like response. And he's pragmatic parents. that way. Yeah. yeah okay. Like, these people are out of their fucking minds, and we need to discipline them. Okay, yeah, this guy, this guy is an INTJ. Do you want to continue? There's, there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> like, iDubs TV is an INTJ. There you go. Like, come on. <laughs> All right, awesome. Next. Uh, who's next? Back to Aiden with Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman, Aiden. All yes. Right. All right, high roller. Aiden, he the is. high roller. He's probably going to change the name in Discord to... Uh, mm -hmm. Aiden, the high roller. Let's just give him his high roller title and call it good, I guess.
All right, let's see. Wow, people really like want any crazy see. idea. <laughs> oh, my uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard to make up a very crazy one. Like witches or something like that. You tell about what people used to do in witches. And, of course, nobody believes in witches now. And you say, how could they believe in witches? Then you turn around and you say, oh, let's see. What witches do we believe in now? What ceremonies do we do? Every morning we brush our teeth. What is the evidence that the brushing the teeth does us any good in cavities? So you start yeah, wondering. Why? What is the evidence? Are we all... Imagine if it... The, as the Earth turns on the orbit, there's an edge between light and dark. Mm -hmm. Along that edge, all the people along that edge who are doing the same ritual <laughs> for no good reason. Absolutely. Just like in the Middle Absolutely. Ages, they and I, for no good had other rituals. And you're trying to picture this, this another line of another toothbrushes around the Earth. Goodness. To take the world from another point of view. Now, it may be, may well be that brushing Direct teeth is a very good movement. thing because it gets rid of cavities. And you're going to ask, you can find out whether it does or it doesn't That's by trying to find out. You're going to ask your dentist, in that regard. And you say, how about evidence? I have not found the evidence TDFI. from dentists. I just learned it in school. That's now, right. I'm not trying to argue that it's good or bad to brush teeth. What I'm trying to TDFI. argue for is to think about and there's also like that devil's advocate approach to the devil's, uh, ITJ's like yeah to yeah the devil's advocate approach he's so direct about it too like yeah what? direct movement no. systematic abstract and he's SFP NTJ Quattro this guy's an INTJ like seriously <laughs> keep uh, going or next uh, next it's obvious Richard all Fox, right TJ right. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard's next oh, oh all right. Tulsi all right all right we, we finally got yeah. to Tulsi huh okay yes all right. Uh, v linked me a YouTube video, though. Is she still next? Uh, Katie Bowman? Yeah, if you found one for uh, for Katie, we can move to that one. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Katie so Bowman. Katie Bowman with, Katie with Bowman. a different spell name. All right. We're going to Katie Bowman, getting our Katie on. Okay. Let's skip ahead. It's a Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Nice. Let's see what she's saying. College aged humans like you're you're looking at orcas with floppy floppy fins and then are just making all these judgments on whales and so um at Ooh, look at me uh i've got mm. te i think everyone else is stupid yeah i could almost is this affiliative though i kind of got like affiliative flair there mm. Mm. I don't know. You're probably seeing a little bit of FI from the TEFI, yeah, but it's yeah, you're probably nothing right. definitive yet. Yeah, nothing definitive. Okay. Realization that so much of our, like your human physiology textbook, that's not human physiology. That shape that you're looking at of a skeleton, that's that's S -E -S -E. modern guy who's worn shoes his whole life and walked on flat and level. Flat and level ground, that's another cast. You're not supposed to walk, like flat and level is the most weird abnormal texture for you to ever walk on and yet you've probably only walked on flat and level for like 99 percent of your oh life God, your ankle joint that's has a different shape treatment. than someone who has walked mm -hmm. in the wilderness their whole entire life that's a c like talking yeah. about other people's mechanical yeah, walking process if because they use more parts just to get walking done you use almost nothing to walk walking is falling like that's our that's our saying it's like sure for someone who sits in the chair most of the time and walks on flat and level in shoes. TIFE, though, man. I'm seeing TIFE here. Spouting the facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not really making the comparison, but let's continue. Hmm. That's falling. Yeah, some people have an incredibly difficult time going up hills. Sure, the different muscles and yeah. it's different. Well, I, uh, one of the first times uh, I went hunting, I went hunting in uh, Montana, and we were climbing up these hills. That's it's um, it used to be the Great Western Inland Sea near uh it's the missouri breaks and so it's this weird clay-like material that covers all the ground and when you're walking uphill you're sliding a lot down and everything is like kind of slippery so everywhere you're going you're constantly counterbalancing and catching yourself and it's not like a s and you get exhausted sure. like you think you're in shape like you could do all kinds of crazy workouts and crossfit your brains out but then you go up these hills all day and you're fucking tired yeah and by the end of the day, you're starving. You have this weird hunger Joe for Rogan's animal like protein. Right? Yeah. For animal out. protein and fat. <laughs> like fatty things and even pasta or any like high calorie things. Like this intense craving for it because your body's just doing all this me, breaking SCS, down SCS, of okay, tissue Joe. all day long. You're Thank stressing you, the body in a weird way that But my SC hero, get, like, like I know the mechanisms better. Like we've, we've gotten we've gotten rid of everything. Anything the only variable that we have less to play with is like intensity 
like it's like, well, I'm walking on this. I'll have to go faster. I'll have to go harder because that's the only thing that you that's left to respond to. Like that's the thing with cast is if you've, if you've removed any other movement that would allow you to do any sort of cross training or use new parts in different ways, then all you have left to do is the same thing harder or faster. But yeah, texture for people who study. She's also being systematic here. Yeah, she is being systematic. I, oh I don't gosh, think she's feeling it. Another INTJ again? <laughs> oh, <my> gosh, <laughs> Everyone's in the wow. INTJ. Wow. Yeah. My goodness. Because she does seem pragmatic. Like, she hasn't made an affiliative statement. She's just like, oh, you know, people haven't lived by these systems anymore, so the skeletons we see aren't the same as they used to be. Right. There's nothing really affiliative about that. She's not saying it's she right making or wrong. an argument for creation. I just kind of have to like ask that question. That's kind of funny to me if that's what's happening. Like, oh, mm, well. it sounds like it's more of an argument on epigenetics and the effect of the environment and how we used to move differently oh, in the past. Epigenetics how that's is the us. dopest. Mm, love that. Sign me up for some more of that epigeneticsness. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, but that's what I think it is. Like talking about the different mechanical strains on the body and how that has affected skeletal shape. Which Makes sense. Okay, Orin King, how could she be an INTP? She hasn't talked about her past at all this entire time. She's been talking about what other people are doing or what happens in general. It has nothing to do with her own past. She's an INTP. She's right. been talking about her own experience she, and telling stories and using stories right. of her own experience, anecdotal evidence, and she hasn't done any of mm-hmm. that right now. The, you know, uh, the human kinetic chain. Oh, INTJ women are rare. Whew. Yep. So if, to the person who said INTJs aren't that rare like things like walking and like the foot skin like you're going up hills and shoes probably but if you if you didn't have shoes on that first level of of traction would be at the skin which means your skin has to be strong enough to carry the load of your body um what if your hands you know people do a ton of work with their upper body Mm, yeah body but they won't actually bring the hand skin along to the strength of the rest of their body because everything's a bar, right? Mm. It's like this flat, uniform level, never occur in nature bar as opposed to picking up things with texture. In nature, there's texture that kind of bite in the skin and then your skin strengthens and then your arms are stronger because, because that first level of carrying or picking up or hauling out or doing anything is traction, traction between you and the earth, human and the earth, the animal and the earth, whether it's a hand or a foot. Yeah, one thing I've never understood yeah, is, uh, I mean, I understand it, but I've never done it. I've never agreed with it. It's guys who put wrist straps on and do all these exercises. So you're carrying weight that your hands can't right. support. Right. But you're kind of doing your body a disservice or you're overloading your joints when you're doing that, aren't you? Yeah, um, because what what's happening is they can't get any stronger to carry that because it's again it's this limited flat and round thing like you know you can pick up your kettlebell or whatever but as it's getting heavier it's the same handle so there's there's parts of you that are left out of getting stronger because the environment is repetitive so if you go out and hang from a tree if you were holding on to something that kind of bit in a little bit then you would be able to carry with your hands whatever you are also able to carry with for the rest of the body there's got to be some sort of cross training for the hands it can't just be that same thing so instead of just gripping like this all the time you should do some stuff like this and you should pull things and you should be and texture texture like texture is it's not musculoskeletal it has nothing to do with the amount your joints flex so so girth bar is one thing you know the size and the shape of the bar and the angle that's one way of cross training the hands but there's also the skin. You know, like your skin is just not be honest, strong Jav, enough because the things of, that you are exercising. With STP NFJ quadra on this one. Definitely feeling that. Not really feeling the SFP NTJ quadra for her. Not really. I mean, yeah, I've seen seems so, mostly. Seems so TI. Like, seems so TI for this. Mm. Yeah, she hasn't really referenced st- statistics I'm not, or yeah, data. Yeah, exactly. Or... There's no references for data, and she just keeps spouting out facts over and over again. Definitely mm-hmm. looking that direction, but still, but still moving. And the, absolutely, and the argumentative process she was making was a logical process. Like, oh, because you didn't walk, because you're using shoes, the bottom layer of your skin on your foot isn't as thick and isn't as variable. That's one of the ways of which our environment and how we exercise is affecting the outcome of our body and blah, blah, blah. That's a logical process. Yeah. 
I'm can, thinking she's can, either an ISTP or an INFJ, and I'm seeing more ISTP, to be honest. It's because she's like TI heroing Joe because Joe keeps trying to get it a word in edgewise, and then she's like, <laughs> I see your TI point right there, but I'm still smarter than you. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Like, you know what I mean? Hmm. <laughs> And she is definitely talking about the biomechanics and the what is. Yeah, it, I mean, it just seems so se parent to me now. Like, yeah, you got a different interview. Uh, Remy brought up a good point. Thanks, bro. Um, now that I know how to spell her name properly, yes. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing way more logic in there. Let's see. There we go. Let's skip ahead. Boom. Large models from the movie, like Saul mm -hmm. with his blinking eye and um, Gandalf riding on the large eagles. That's this nice. is a shout out to, you know, all the LO uh, TR fans out there. Gandalf riding on the back of eagles. Those are all installed in the airport. So you're just like walking through and there's just these huge eagles everywhere. And then you're looking up and there's a guy like on the back That's and it's Gandalf. And Saul is installed in the airport so the kids can climb and sit on him and his I'm eyes, you know, back to give you eyes looking around right. and opening and closing. So it was the kids haven't seen the movie movies, um, but they like they're they're kind of informed in, in reverse yeah. just because there's there's a giant. Um, Smeagol just on the top of some random building, you know, and he's there. It's Gollum, and he's just what is, what is, what is. This is you know, right. Telling them the story of the of the movie as we would go on a six hour hike. So I, they've got it in in storytelling verbal format now in the place that it was filmed. She's talking about other people telling stories. Yep. Se. <laughs> Se. And then that should change the way that the movie feels maybe later on. So oh, we'll I see. love it. My nerd heart is just singing right now. I know some people are like, what is this? What? Smeagol? Eagle? What? But yeah, I, I, I love that stuff. And um, But wow, what an amazing story. And I can't wait to see what, and we've been talking about this a little bit, but with 2018, the things that are going to come from that with you. So yeah. I'm very excited. But uh, one of the first things I want to talk about, you've got an, just obviously a lot of books. And I joked with you before. You know, just about like, is this just like breathing to you? But you've got incredible books on topics that aren't covered enough in popular culture, yeah. but are really quite pervasive. And yeah. one of them being Direct. diastasis recti. So let's talk about that for folks like that might not know what it is. And yeah. let's, of course, talk about some of the ways to address it, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Yeah. So diastasis recti is a book with, you know, on one hand, a terrible title because mm -hmm. It's got this like Latin anatomical diagnosis term. And, and when I was picking the name for the book, so it's so diastasis um, recti is Concrete. is like technically the Latin is a is a separation or a mm -hmm. distancing of the rectus abdominis. So if you think of like a six pack, it's that the muscle that runs down the center of your abdomen. And it's actually two separate muscles, um, but they start. Concrete. Okay. Separating from she each other. They're not really ever attached TV. to each other, but they start. Yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm. Next. All right. Well, I think we've got, uh, we've got to go to Chris Angel, uh, Jordan nice. Spikes, up the war here. He says, bring on the war over Tulsi Gabbard. So, All right. Chris Angel. Tulsi. Tulsi got <laughs> put back down. All she right. did. Yeah. Uh, we're closing Super Chats very soon, folks. So now's your chance to get him in. Closing off Super Chats in a few moments. So... Right, Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Mm, Alright, let's get an interview. Because I'm probably just going to find him doing magic tricks. Yep. Ooh, he's on Ellen. Uh, and he's also on a show called The Doctors. Yeah, he's with Pet. Interview with Penn and Teller. Raka, so that, that terrible title thing actually is saying that you're giving the audience a bad experience through SE Parent. That's where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. It wasn't All a right. value judgment. It was a perception of people having a negative experience. Go ahead, Jeb. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what it took. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you have to do. If I want to do your show and be in your show every night, what will it take? Okay, so that's him saying, if I wanted to be in your show and... That's what would interest it take? based. Mm-hmm. It's also a little bit of NIs and a little bit informative. Like he's being, he's informatively yeah, telling them, I want to be on your show. Well, it should be a, no more than a couple thousand. <laughs> We're not cheap like you. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have been working together for how long? Oh, 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. And how do you keep it fresh? Well, we're always doing new stuff. I mean, that's the big deal. And also, uh, we don't socialize that much. Who's talking? Only is on he the one interviewing? Like, like, what? Who's talking? The INFJ-sounding guy is uh, Chris Angel. The guy who sounds like uh, a pompous ESFP is um, <laughs> Penn. Okay. But I th it, it almost and, sounds and like... Teller doesn't talk. Yeah. It almost sounds like Chris is doing the interview. Yeah, that's what I'm. that's what I'm thinking. I don't even think this is a real interview. I think it's just a sarcastic hangout between them, and then they just put interview in the title for some reason. Okay. Oh, it, it actually is called Chris Interviews Penn and Teller. Hmm. Oh, Penn and Teller. Well, very special When you bring somebody else into the relationship. Very special occasion. I say. Why do you think magicians hate us? It's not any of the professionals that hate mm -hmm. us, you know. But uh, amateurs uh, in magic, uh, hobbyists, tend to take rules that are meant to be artistic and compositional rules and use them as though they were moral rules. Uh, the rule that you don't give magic tricks away is a pretty good rule for a kid learning card tricks. Once you've come out of that and you're doing things that are more complicated, it's not a rule, it's a suggestion. So like a rule, for example, that would be broken or one that magicians would probably be upset with would be like normally if you took a cigarette and you were to place it onto your hand, you would use an ice cube mm -hmm. to numb the, the finger. Mm -hmm. That way it wouldn't hurt you. And in this That's situation, we have no ice cube. And the trick is with you, the trick is not caring. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's mind over matter. Movement. No, it's stupidity. For your nipples now, like that you was did direct. before. It is mind over matter? For my nipples? On your nipples. Nipples like you did before. No, you enjoyed it much more than me. <laughs> You enjoyed Actually, it tell us when I'm videotaping it, <laughs> and I think he's going to be releasing another, that another video. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Magician's yeah. gone wild. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see that really selling. <laughs> wow. Magician's <laughs> <are> so <laughs> I. Yeah, you could see that selling. I'm like, SE, good experience. It's going to be a good experience for people. Yep. Very it's also informative. You could see that selling. Uh, is that informative? No, it's not informative. No, not no, no, no. I, I saw it informative for a second as in saying people would enjoy that. No, but now that statement. I think about it, no, it definitely is just an essay statement. <laughs> We're going to be doing a bit together, which I was really honored um, that you guys asked me to participate. Really honored You've never done PTI. that with anybody on videotape on our show. But it just seemed exactly. I was that good, wasn't I? Yeah, you were that good. That good. good. S E N I, I F I T. Okay, the, yeah, Chris Angel's S T P N F J Quadra for sure. Ooh. S T P N F J Quadra. I mean, start. The start of the video, I did say kind of looked like an I N F J. Yeah, well, I mean, I have him down <laughs> for abstract, and we know he's interest based for sure. So, and he's direct, and he's movement. So, yeah. Right. Little, little we have more. some 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 people like Todd Robbins, Tom John, Robbins yeah. sure. Johnny Thompson. Oh, Johnny Thompson's wonderful. He, he'll he'll do any of the best. He's one of he's the, the best. best. Yeah. He works your show. One works... thing is, he'll always be working in show business. Yeah. Johnny Thompson knows how what to get. Hell? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh Johnny, Johnny, come back up. I'll tell you. Someone call me. <laughs> You're the best. Ben Johnny. Johnny. sounds like an ENTJ yeah. to me. To be honest, like he's so really. Yeah, he just sounds like an ENTJ. He's definitely initiating. Uh, direct. He's S E N I. Um, direct initiating uh -huh. SENI, and he's uh, talking about like the process or the system of magic tricks, TEFI, systematic. So I think he's an ENTJ for Pendulet. Yeah, yeah, definitely NTJ SFP quadro. I nailed yeah. down. I just was <laughs> looking into it too much. So there you go, Booga. Uh, he's an ENTJ. Um, and uh, let's get just a little bit more Chris Angel here. Just a little bit more. I right. want to verify something. A little bit more. Chris Angel reveals his true purpose. I hope the same person. Got short ahead. The one and only Chris Angel. Thank you so Welcome much for back. having me. This is uh, great. I have to bring up your last interview from the last time you were here because I watched it back. I loved it so much. You were 
talking a lot responding. about passion and building your brand. Kind of reminds me a little bit like Putin. Yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely, uh, we got something responding make- there. So he's an INFJ. Like, yeah. Yep, he's an INFJ. So there you go, Chris Angel. Next. All right, Kylie Minogue is at the top of the leaderboard. All right, oh. Kylie Minogue. All right, Super Chats are closed, folks. Super Chats are now closed. No more Super Chats. They are closed. Thank you. Kylie Minogue. All right, Kylie Minogue interview on Graham Norton. Let's check this out. Uh, time for our next guest. This pop icon is sold. Oh, let's skip ahead so we don't have to listen to any of her music and get copy striked. Hashtag YouTube cancer. Actually, when I was filming The Matrix in 90... Impossible, Impossible Princess. Yeah. Yeah. Princess. Yeah. So you were everywhere. Did we made then? Um, there might have been a We've fleeting been. passing oh, wow. something so at a something. something. So at Great to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so does Kylie appear in Rocket Man? No. Why not? No. Why, why not? not? Sorry. This why is a very good question. Well, no, actually, this is totally unplanned. The director of Rocket Man is sat in the audience. It's called Dexter Fletcher. And Dexter Fletcher? And he appeared in Kylie's music video. Oh, I my goodness. I forget the name goodness. of the song. Dex, go on, stand up. Oh, Dexter. Oh, 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 we have an ESFP in our hands. Like, it sounds very ESFP to me. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, of course, then your other connection, your other connection is... <laughs> I still have, yeah. as you can see. Very, very. Thank you. Yeah. You're cooler right now. Yeah. Yes. But your your other connection is you have duetted with Elton John. I did a long time ago. Uh, yeah. I believe it was 1995. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. At the Royal Albert Hall. Yes. Now, did you know that uh, Sir Elton would look like this? <laughs> <laughs> to be specific, he was he went as Donatella Versace. Did I know? I think I knew. But can one but I know? I think I knew that. because no, I have no T.I. Trickster cannot. and I don't know. <laughs> I'm T.I. Trickster. Oh my goodness. I uh, sound concrete. That could also be SI Nemesis or SI Critic. Like, she's unsure about the experience she had back then and is insecure about whether she's recalling it correctly. Yeah, true, true. Let's keep going. Beautiful. Uh, now, this is a big weekend for Kylie and Kylie Minogue fans uh, because you're announcing um, a new album. Sort of, yeah, a greatest hits album. Sort of, which yeah. turns out to be far more emotional than I had anticipated. Because this is your definitive Ooh, greatest hits. Yes, yes, although there wasn't enough room for all of them, so there are a couple missing. Okay, it's out on the 28th of June, but people can pre-order it now. I've got it here. Uh, look, everybody, it's Step Back in Time. Yeah. Now, I, th- I mean, I, are, are there missing? I was looking at the eyes that they were all on. I, well, almost. Saran Jones, you have a, what hit are you looking for? Um, oh, it have to be especially for you. Oh, we've got that. that. We've got that. We've got that. Yeah, uh, thick. Darren. Lucky, right? Yes. Lucky. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, look emotion. Oh, it's here. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's have a look. We put together a montage of just a few of uh, Kylie's hits. Okay. No. No. No montage, please. <laughs> please, God, no. 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 Right, let's go next. Different, different, um, different interview, please. Uh-huh. Super chats are closed, folks. No super chats. So this is from 2004. Now, you do look tremendous. Absolutely radiant. It's very kind of you. Well, I tried to. very <laughs> kind of you, T.I.F.E. How are you going? How are you doing? I'm good, but I have to say straight off the bat, I'm really, I'm in my first studio home. We here where I used to shoot. You know what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the INFJ is, like, like triggering me. It's really me. exciting being 
<laughs> Triggering me. Freaky scene. The canteen's still in the same place. And, and the same food. Trust me. <laughs> it's just a little different because I used to be screaming in here and my dad's in 1200. <laughs> running late. It's it's a... No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Memories, or is it a time that you would, in some no, ways, really, rather forget? Not really fond memories. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And what brings you home? Really this fond time memories. It seems like a strange question. Him. Well, it was a last-minute decision to come back, primarily for this uh, auction benefit dinner we have on Friday night for Kids Helpline. Oh yes, and, oh, how, right how affiliative! Yeah, how, how affiliative! Very nice. <laughs> so when did you get in? Was it this morning? It was yesterday morning. And how are you feeling right about now? Uh, Suitably delirious. I, I know my name, so that's good. Stuff. <laughs> I know my name. Now, I want to get to the, the new album, which is which is great, but uh, you've got uh, the new single coming out soon, Chocolate. And uh, I know you've been shooting the clip. I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. But whenever a new clip, Kylie clips... She's also a little bit informative there. I know my name. That's basically her saying, I'm yeah. not good, but I'm not it's dead either. It's also TIFE uh, deprecation as well. Mm -hmm. Comes out. Yeah. There's always high expectations. Should we have a high expectation for this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's different. Um, I really wanted to do uh, some ballet in it, so I managed to. That's I nearly killed myself in rehearsals, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 classy. <laughs> we hope. How much training do you have to do, or how much preparation goes into making each of your clips? Um. Well, this one is different because I normally have about a total of two or three hours to learn all the choreography. Well, actually, let's skip past this so we don't get copy strikes to music. The, the regimen of putting a show together. Very. I mean, it's it's unlike anything else. I love it. I love it so much. Um, and there's a little bit of me that just hates it. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Um, but it does allow you to forget about the rest of the world I'm, i don't know what's going on i've lost touch with friends I'm, you live in this little bubble um that was an interesting okay. it was because he, he set her up for a um i was actually about to say he set her up for like to discuss the system of producing her content Yep. And she basically just skipped past yep, that and just like oh you yep. know yeah. it sometimes feels good and it sometimes feels bad that's interest Yep, that's interesting. What she gets out of it, how it emotionally impacts her, and how she can sometimes just switch off, and other times it's good, and other times bad. Absolutely interesting. I think at times? Um, no, not, not really. Uh, well, occasionally, but not really. Because you, ha you become a family with, I guess I have 100 people on the road. And my mom's normally with me as well, so that's, 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 always, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. And uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a challenge every day, and every every night I want my show to be one hundred and ten percent. Because I'm such a tears, perfectionist. Just... Because I've seen inferior. Because I'm an <laughs> INFJ. LOL. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, finally. Yes. How do you spell that? T U L S I. T U L S I. Okay, let's get her on Joe Rogan. Yes. So that's the best possible situation we can get her in. So democratic Thank politician. You. Skip a little bit in, bam. People in our elections, we also need to stop doing the same thing in other countries. Yeah, without doubt. Um, but we need to. That's an S-I-N-E statement. We need to stop it doing other things, in other, it is. things in other countries. But there's also I'm calling out ES2 the, the question right is, what is... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah? That's very direct. And it's Russia trying to achieve... Her, her and you... Like that. Direct one... and control. I'm, say, I'm one calling could... ESTJ off that one sentence. Wow. That... <laughs> yeah. And one could also argue that that sentence was affiliative. We should not do these yes, things in was. other countries. Exactly. <laughs> Let's keep going. Chief. Like, why do they want someone like Donald Trump in office versus someone like Hillary Clinton? Like, what is to be gained? And in how much, you know, I mean, how much do they benefit from that? Yeah. This is what's really one of the big questions that's going on right now. Yeah. With all the Russian hearings and the Mueller investigation mm -hmm. and trying to get to the bottom of all this and why they did what they did and what they did. And, and there's many people that are blowing this off and they don't think that it's important. And, you know, the, the president's claiming it's a witch hunt. But it's very odd that we're having this conversation in the first place. It's never existed before in any single presidential election. There's never been talk of us 
Tell or Joe any shut up. politician that's running for president being influenced yeah. by a foreign superpower mm-hmm. before today. We hear what mm-hmm. he says. It's just it amazing like grandson, so. that it took until 2016 before this became a real they issue. Probably went on that's a true. date afterwards. That's true. <laughs> <There's talk> about- <laughs> <laughs> she responded, "That's true. Oh, that's true. Look at me. Tea I got tea. I have tea. I but Hillary and uranium and oh, all kinds up, of other Joe. different issues. And, you know, I mean, um, I'm, I'm not a giant Hillary Clinton fan. And one, one of the reasons why I'm not is I just I think she's a politician, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I don't think she's a genuine person. I just don't. I think you get Preach to it, a, a level it. of lying and the way they conduct themselves. Yeah, but if we don't listen to what he says, we might lose the context of her answer, which would make uh... me an <laughs> and the way they've been doing it for so long that it, they don't even think it's a bad thing. It's just a thing you do. But one of the weirder ones that I ever saw from her was after the Libya, uh, after Qaddafi yeah. was killed, where she was not yeah. on the record, but Please she was still being recorded. They were talking people. to her. You know what I'm talking I about. I do. Where she said, we came, we saw, we, what was it? We came, we we saw him, he died. What was the exact quote? I don't I remember the exact quote. Yeah. We, we came, came, we saw, and he's dead, or something. Yeah, like and that. she was laughing, yeah. like literally <laughs> laughing. That was direct. But this is this is exactly uh, what I'm talking about about oh, what I'm that talking about. attitude yeah. within Washington, and, right. and for me, that was that was really the main reason why in 2016 I was a vice chair of the why Democratic I did National this thing Party. In the past, um, I'm an as an user. officer of the party, you're supposed to stay neutral in these Democratic primaries. I'm supposed to stay neutral, but doing my it duty got to a SIE. point where I felt. I stepped down from that position, resigned as vice chair to endorse Bernie Sanders, largely because of the huge difference. She's talking in anecdotes, what she did around that time. Oh, I supported Bernie Sanders. I stepped down because I followed the process. In their worldviews with Hillary Clinton's very um, hawkish interventionist uh, foreign policy and track record, Libya is is a very uh, prominent and recent example. Yeah, because she like Another basically caused Sean Smith to die. Um, non-interventionist <laughs> worldview. Uh, th- that was an issue again. Like if you're talking, about, people weren't really raising the Very differences. They're saying, "Oh, she was Secretary of State, so she's great on foreign policy," but not actually looking at what is the actual policy, right? And what kind of judgment would either of these individuals have when they're serving in that control. most? Job of commander in chief, following the and process, that was that was the, policy, uh, a very key difference, and that was something I talked about a lot as I campaigned with Bernie very around the country, and and that statement. was something that I saw and heard from people in you know big cities, small towns, I Midwest, I North, South, East, West, people who things, appreciated. Um, all right, I can't take it anymore. She's an ESTJ. <laughs> just being told the truth. Boom, boom. Who's next? Next. All right, we got Justin Payne. Justin Payne. And two more after this, Chase. All right. Aiden cool. just did another twenty-five dollar donation. No, stop! I said <laughs> no, no, stop, Aiden, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> he just likes to torture us. That's all he likes. This is I like, think that's what this is. Yeah. 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 I mean, shoot. <laughs> oh let's get let, let's get through these. Um. All right, go speed racer. No more super oh, chats. Next? Damn it. Who's next? <laughs> Actually, no, no, no. There's more Just... super chats, but the minimum amount is $50. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Coin slots. We'll always All coin right. slots. Uh... Yeah, so we're, next? we're looking for Justin Payne. Justin, Justin Payne. Payne. How do you spell Payne? Okay. P-A-Y-N-E or P-A-I-N-E? Yes, sir. P-A-Y-N-E. Like... Hurry, and no more Joe Rogan freaking speeches plots. <laughs> no more Joe Rogan. Okay, so this guy looks like a pedophile hunter. Oh. Who is this person? Oh, God. <laughs> Aiden. Aiden. Uh, he, he called my bluff for 50 He did it, did he? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just do Aiden's next, okay? Okay, all right. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Do you want me to do it before or after Justin Payne? Before. <laughs> all right, I'll do it right now. Mark Zuckerberg and Yuval Noah Harari in conversation. Let's check this one out. 
Hey everyone, this year I'm doing a series of those in person town who share that interest. I think it's good if you can form those kind of communities um, and now people have um, can, can find connections and can find a group of people who share their interest. And I think that there's a question though of you can look at that as fragmentation, right? Because now we're not all doing the same things, right? We're not all um, you know, tell, going to- Tell the INTJ to shut up. Kind of looks like a ginger vampire. Okay. <laughs> Things and I'm, I'm curious if you have a view on that and where that's positive versus oh God, where that head like a minute, um, still talking. creates a lack of social cohesion. Yeah, I mean, I, I think almost nobody would argue with the benefits of a um, richer social environment in which people have more options so uh, to connect around all kinds of things. The, the, the key question is how do you still create enough social cohesion on the level of the country and increasingly also on the level of the entire globe in order to tackle our, uh, our, our, our main problems. I mean, we need global cooperation like never before because we are facing unprecedented global problems. We just had Earth Day, mm -hmm. and um, to be obvious to everybody, we cannot deal with the problems of, of the environment, of climate change, except through global cooperation. Similarly, if you think about the, uh, the, the potential NESI. talking about global cooperation, all the things everyone has to do to achieve that future. No, not necessarily. Yeah, it could be. He could actually be pragmatic. Hmm. Because you could support global warming from a pragmatic point of view. Like, it's something that needs to happen for the world to exist. That's a pragmatic view. He's in foreign initiating movement, though, hands down. He's NESI, yeah. hands down, for sure. Yeah. So he's he either an ENFP or an ENTP. Yeah, he's abstract. He's either an ENFP or an ENTP. So. Social disruption caused by new technologies like artificial intelligence, uh, we need to find a mechanism for global cooperation around issues like how to prevent an AI arms race, mm -hmm. how to prevent different countries racing to build no, autonomous how about we systems don't create and robots and, and weapon AI arms race. That would be nice. <laughs> like, great. That's also yeah. another NESI statement. Yeah. That's also like, NESI, like what yeah. everyone else has to do, what they, what everyone else shouldn't do this. <sighs> the internet and weaponizing <laughs> social networks um unless we have global cooperation we can't stop that because well, every country will say oh well gosh, we don't want to produce killer robots it's a bad idea like but we growing, can't allow our rivals growing uh oh, yeah. like it's like growing on my arms oh the yeah. globalism this guy this guy's an entp like yeah he, he, <laughs> he, is. he, he is he is an entp i know I'm... You want to keep going, or you, no. you reckon that's enough? That's enough. He's an ENTP. Mm. I I wanted him to not be, but I can't. I have to do <laughs> this globalist is an ENTP. Okay. Just he's, he's literally Justin a clone Payne. for Reed Zakaria. Like no, Justin Payne's next. Justin yeah. Payne pod trash. Okay, Justin Payne interview. Perfect pod trash radio. That's Here it. we go. Is that all of them? Go we got uh, yeah. two more. Okay. Including right, Justin a Payne, bit please, God Almighty. No, two after Justin. All right, go speed <laughs> racer. Just two months ago to Montreal. Who's talking? And I yeah. guess because of my location, they uh, they started feeding this, and I go through the, that someone would just use that. Like, what no, what possessed you to do this? Because I, I've explained everything that you do. Amateur videos. Okay. Want to be comedy amateur so videos? Justin Payne. Okay. And I could never find like. My fit, like it was always frustrating. Like I, you need your fit, right? It's anything you do. And one day I just decided that I was gonna see what would happen if I made a fake profile and just said, "Hey, see what like I'm a kid." I? And to my surprise, the person showed up. And then they just they didn't stop showing up. They started showing up every time. And then I mean. Things really just picked up after that. I mean, like everybody else started to do it. It started to become normal. When I did it, I kind of tried to keep it a secret, like in my own Facebook, and that was it. Because I had told people at work and stuff, and, and they were like teasing, and like it, it, this wasn't like how it is now. Now it's like it's everybody's doing it. And yeah, I've seen that. For me, like I didn't know, I didn't know how. 
how to like let everybody kind of know that this is what I was doing in my spare time. <laughs> because I mean, essentially, direct. I'm sitting in my car and I'm chatting with adults that want to have sex with kids. A lot of people that I know at the time were thinking like, that's a little bit weird. Yeah, that's, not a, doing. that's hard to start a conversation when people say, that's that's funny to think about. Like, when, did your parents find out about this? And you say like, oh, oh what do you I'm do? Yes. <laughs> My mom drove like three hours to my house. She was pissed. Yeah. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, no, this is dangerous. Like, you saw what happens to those people on those shows. Like, yeah. Like anything could happen. Like, these people could show up with a gun. They could beat you up. Like, that's right. That's right. So, what is your what is your counteraction for that? Do you in your head say, okay, if this guy I show up and he pulls out a fucking knife or a gun, what do I do? Do you have a plan? I, and, and I'd like to think about it. Is a lot of people don't see. The, some of the manipulation that I'm doing in the situations, like when I'm yelling, I'm stressing them out. Yeah. And it, like, there's always ways to get Ooh. answers. Like, good cop, bad cop. When I'm yelling, I'm stressing them out. Is that S E O N S? Like, yeah, it's S E N I and it's T I F E. He's an S T P N F J Quadra. And it almost sounds like a pessimistic. He SE. sounds I S T P as well. Yeah. Hmm. Really sounds I S T P to me for sure. Yeah, he's being pragmatic doing this for one, and it's only mm -hmm. been concrete, right? And he like screams to cause an intimidation factor. To... Yeah, that's an SE parent thing to do. Yeah, he's an ST, yeah, yeah, like for sure. Okay, I was gonna say, it's definitely like a, a pessimistic SE, and I guess in the parents' life, it being more. responsible also makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. Talk nice, ask questions, relate, do what Chris Hansen does, and repeat what they say. And then it leaves them to finish the rest of the sentence. Um, so that's kind of what I try to do. And in a situation that would get violent, that's pretty much what I would try to do is use my words as my gun. Yeah, I noticed I mean, you're a really good conversationalist yeah, with safe. these guys. You seem to really have a, an idea of how to pull the information out of them and make them feel like they're in a situation where they have to stay there. Because you, you figure, Ooh. you say specifically, you can leave at any time. You guys don't have to stay here. Go, uh, leave, go home if you want. And most responding. of them just continue standing there. And it's not like they're there to admit what they do. That's also um, more S-E-N-I. Like, he's putting him in a position to make them comfortable yeah. at the same time, in the same thing. He'll scream he's when also necessary. He's intimidating them, yeah. yeah. He's, got, he's got, like, this massive awareness of S-E where he can strike the balance of making them comfortable so that they don't leave, even though they can leave any time, but intimidate them so that they don't attack him. Yep. Like, that's some very proficient SE use right there. It's also interest-based as well, because he's looking at, uh, you know, like, he's he, he knows that these people are interested, you know, as, the, as their pedos, right? He knows what they're interested yeah. in, he's leveraging it against them. Oh, yeah, that's true. And also the fact that, like, the interviewer asked, like, oh, what do you do if they're going to pull out a gun or a knife or da-da-da-da? He didn't have a system in place. He didn't have, like, a mate in the other room with a shotgun or, you know... Um, yeah. You know, uh, cops waiting, or you know, uh, he'd call the PD beforehand, or da 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 da. He didn't. He didn't yeah, specify we'll any system. He did was wrong. They are there to just keep telling you, "Oh, I was just here to hang out with them, tell them uh, not to do this. It's wrong." Or, "Hey, there's a Tim Hortons here. I was just heading there anyway." It's it's strange how you kind of get them to stay there. And they don't leave uh, with, with some. Let's skip ahead. Let's get some different context common thing that a lot of pictures but i found all right let's see what he's and he's in oh my maybe, god you know, 20, and he you're a terrible interviewer if you talk 75 like percent of the time agree with that because oh my god a million times so code where you go by and say all right i gotta say like this is another point for responding i've gone through like five minutes of audio and he hasn't spoken once yeah you gotta hint. Hey, Unless you're well, the other problem already. is. Go. Hit the play button, please. Sorry to cut you out, but the other problem is the fact that. Oh, here we go. I've seen it happen before where human rights groups and stuff get involved due to the it's fact that. For well, one, there's mental health issues that a lot of individuals face, and you can kind of. That becomes an issue. And the other thing is. If you go by just wanting to meet, well, in court, they could say maybe they were just there to help. Maybe they were there to guide this person offline. I mean, it sounds bizarre to us, 
but there are there's ways for them to get out of it. So for me, they need to say ways for them to get out of it. The most disgusting things ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd also noticed that oh. you got a call. Yeah. Most disgusting yeah. things ever. Yeah. SCNI. <clears throat> yeah. This guy's an ISTP. There you go. Oof. All right. Who's next? All right. Stephen Curry's next. Ooh, the basketballer. Yep. This shouldn't be too hard. One right. more after this, right? That's right. No more terrible interviews, please. <laughs> <laughs> terrible interviewers. <laughs> My wife, like you said, growing up there in Markham, Ontario, which is kind of right out the way of, of Toronto, and uh, spent sixth through eighth grade uh, off and on up there. So talked about it before. It's always special going back up there. Still, I don't think it's sunk in, and this That's is for the cool. final. So pretty special um but when it gets to the time on the floor it's obviously business uh as usual and energy up there seems amazing so it'll be it'll be fun did you ever live full time in toronto yeah for a couple years David. year and a half okay. so the first year and a half that your dad was there uh the last year and a half yeah so you guys moved up from charlotte direct so what, that year and a half? what do you what do you remember from that year and a half I mean, just how, uh, what did you say? <laughs> Chat, what happened? I put you on the spot. Apparently, it's uh, well documented in Chapter 2 of wow. Golden. That's terrible SI right there. Yeah. Like, somebody tried to hit his SI, and he's just like, didn't even remember something he wrote in a book. Yeah. <clears throat> and, like, he even had to speak to one of his, like, friends or aides, like, Hey, uh, what chapter was it in in the book? And then, like, you can see, like, a little bit. S- you can you see a little bit of SE, like, feeling upset, like, oh, shit, I put this person on the spot, and they might not know. And I might have embarrassed them. <clears throat> so, I don't know. That just tells me it's a weak SI. So, probably SI in the shadow. Yeah. <laughs> Written by Marcus Thompson. Uh, so, i refer to that for my. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Was, was it, oh, <laughs> I mean, the SI is so terrible, he even forgot what the question was. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's like worse than me, and I got SI trickster. And he's an issue. <laughs> Sorry, demon. Control. I'm sorry, I'm in demon. It was the culture was amazing. Uh, it was cold, obviously. We spent most That's of the winter statement. months there. Couldn't culture also be an FE statement? It is. But uh, people are amazing, so diverse. Ooh, people are amazing, good people. That's definitely FE. Yep. FE uh, good, good energy. Amazing candy. Amazing candy. <laughs> amazing candy. Yeah, they, they, they have a how pragmatic of him. brand called Maynard. Hmm. And shout out to them. I got no skin in the game. I just love their love their stuff. So every time I go back, I stash yes, up. I know he's. But uh, going to Queensway Christian College, which uh, I believe is no longer in existence, but uh, it's where me, my brother, and my sister all went to school. It was a, it's where we went to a school. Great, uh, great time there. Met some really cool people. Right, like he used his brother and his sister as a totem to remember yep. college. Yeah, uh, Still in touch with my middle school coach, James Lackey, who still supports me to this day so uh yeah it kind of does remind me of alex yep he's St- stephen curry is an estp folks there you go next all right, all right. Drum roll. last one this is j cole j period cole c-o-l-e who is that j period cole okay so last that's one. a stinger interview <clears throat> J. Cole and Little Pump interview. Let's get one with just J. Cole, preferably. All right, J. Cole t- talks for nearly an hour with the Wall Street Journal. Oh, let's skip a little bit in so we avoid any introduction music, and let's go. Calls started coming from colleges because I... Oh, let me... Who's talking? My... I believe this is J. Cole. I had this real underground buzz, so kids at college who who are the presidents of organizations, you know, they, they want to bring me to their school. Right. So that was, that was my first solo tour experience was doing this. Any college after college after college. 
before you know it, by that next year, I'm on my own tour doing clubs, 400, 500 people venues. It's just, like, it's just a slow growth. And before you knew it, I had been out on the road three straight years. Like I never, I never actually got off the road. It felt like, so yeah, that was that was my experience. And yeah. the 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 singles. Who- and then after talking that, he ends up with the statement like, "I felt like that." Blah, blah, blah. It's like cl- yeah. classic T E F I. Yep. Who that and workout didn't do spectacular. Well, who that didn't. Okay. Oh, well, workout didn't at first either. If that's what you mean. Yeah, like in the beginning. Right, right. But right. then you ended that's up that's selling in like yeah. over two hundred thousand. Yeah, it's an NESI statement because he's he calling the initiating pump. again. The workout didn't work out too good. <laughs> you know, he's talking about a anecdotal uh, point of view of when he was working out and how it wasn't that good. Thousand copies in right. your first week with your debut album. Absolutely. Was that a testament to the fact that you did so much work on the road, on the business side? Yeah. And you built fan by fan. Right. Absolutely. So. Yeah, Who That was my first single I had ever put out. It, it didn't connect the radio because it was aggressive. It was just a real rap song with me rapping on it. Um, and just like you said, by the time I released an album, finally got a release date from the label. By the time I had released that album, uh, released the album, I didn't have a, a, a song that was connecting that radio. Would you say him referencing the release and date is like a TE statement? Yes, it is a TE statement. He keeps initiating. Like, Worked out without. He's like tangenting mid-sentence. Yeah. So what is it? T E F I N E S I. Yeah, I mean he's a forward it, it, initiating it, it, movement. We know he's a starter, title. and then we know he mm-hmm. is in the uh, <clears throat> STJ NFP Quadra, and the only starter that has these cognitive functions is an ENFP. So mm-hmm. there you go. <clears throat> the ENFP. There it is. It was. That- so. Oh, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Great show, guys. Oh, wow, that was uh, that was a little rough. All right, thank you, folks, uh, for coming tonight. Uh, I'm exhausted, so I'm going to like skedaddle. Uh, also, like, uh, don't forget, uh, season finale of season 14 was released on Patreon Gold. Go ahead and check that out. It is the Golden Pair Romantic Compatibility Lecture for ENFP and INFJ. It is almost two hours long, and it is the dopest. So check that out. Uh, we also got yeah. some new articles coming out as well. Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Jab? I mean, I was just going to point out that was a nice segue to uh, type in ENFP at the end and then talk about the ENFP INFJ golden pair on Patreon. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, your uh, your coin slot is well lubricated, but the segue is definitely like burning rubber right now, bro. So, uh, I know. <clears throat> spin segue spin burnouts. Spin. Yeah, segue burnouts. Awesome, folks. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, glad to have you here, and we'll see you guys next week. Talk to you later. Good night.